uh, uh, you can you can put the second page and yeah so so i would like to thank you kiel nicole nikita philip and zinovi for your wonderful invitation we are so happy to be here it is a such a great pleasure jacqui and vela yeah i also want to thank the organizer uh, for you know giving a chance to give a talk with jan and i also would like to follow uh, jan's suggestion of saying thank you in vietnamese which is uh, um, so, uh, so I would like to, however, I assure you that please, uh, please do, please do not voice that uh, this talk will be not just in Slovak and Vietnamese. <laughs> we, we shall also use English, and so, and actually, mainly English. So, so perhaps um, uh, we, we can we can go on. Yeah. So, 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 so here, here is um, the, the Hanoi Institute. It is a beautiful institute where sometime our collaborator Tan, uh, who is also participated uh, in a number of the, uh, our joint work, uh, is occasionally working. Uh, so that is the University of Chicago. The big building here is called the Rockefeller Chapel. And far away, you can see the math department where I used to spend a lot of time doing math there. And yeah, it has been a fun time. I graduated last December and I will be a postdoc with John starting this June. Yeah, yeah I'm very happy, of course, that uh, Tung joined us. This incredible pleasure. So, so, so here, here is um, uh, Wellesley. So, so it should be everything well there because of the uh, suggestions and suggestions. They were our collaborator and uh, uh, finds uh, Andy Schultz's work. You know, here, this is the place where, where we are working and hopefully we, um, uh, after pre-COVID and after COVID time, we, we can again chase a soccer ball and the mathematical idea in front of University College, which is uh, displayed here. Um, so, so today our talk, you will kind of telling a story of how our collaboration start and, you know, kept, you know, very new for me and I think it will be new for everyone. So I want to start with a kind of the beginning of the story, how everything started. So I graduated in December, December 2020 and in October, I started to looking for job and I look on the website and I found that Johnny doing some, you know, very interesting work. And there's two reasons I'm very interested working with Jan. So first of all, his research is kind of related to my thesis. And second of all, we have a wonderful Post of when she turned and he Vietnamese. So naturally, I think maybe I can, can try to see whether we can work with Jan. So I sent an email to Jan, quick, you know, basically say the following. Uh, my name is Tung, and I'm interested in your work with when she turned on massive product on Gao Komorji. And can we speak via Skype? So, so, so in, indeed, um, la last year was, of course, of course, terrible pandemic thing. It, it was, it was a terrible thing were happening. On the other hand, there's, there's some amazing thing happened. Some, some fantastic excitement. We had. I was very lucky that I had uh, uh, a, a wonderful collaborator, Lyle Miller, who were working interdisciplinary thing, and we were working with our students. It was, it was just, just wonderful. And, and then. Uh, something amazing indeed happened in October uh, 2020, as Tung was telling, he sent me this email and for me, that was the beginning of new life. <laughs> I was, I am so happy and, and this is something we want to I, I point on, on the excitement which is coming afterwards. I cannot do full justice of this in, in this talk. I hope to do perhaps in the next talk so more justice to, to this, but but at least a little bit. So so indeed, as uh, Tung con connected me that we could speak via Skype. So so uh, so we did we did speak, and uh, here is what I hope that, that uh, my my new life began. <laughs> so with uh, with my friends and collaborator, and so it is it's just wonderful, and I'm very very excited. Um, so can you please explain what is massive product and you know why it's relevant to studying Gawa uh, theories? Um, yes, so 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 let me um, so so kind of don't ask me to, for some kind of motivations. It's different motivations than me for for this thing, and we want to connect our different motivations. So so I I was uh, coming from Gallo theoretic perspective, and let me begin with um, with um, it, the whole talk will be relatively. Big. Try to keep it very elementary. So, so, so it is. So, I will fix notation. So, so let 
F is, is a field, uh, F uh, star is multiplicative, the Hubble field P is a prime number, zeta P is primitive, I would in F, and G, F is absolute Gallagher, but a favorite subject, right? And this Messi Florence is here, right? and many, many other people, everybody is like, like it. So, 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 so this is our object of study. And then we have, um, elements uh, in multiplicative group, A1 up to AN from uh, uh, multiplicative group, so an element. And for these elements, we uh, associate in usual thing in the Kumai theory, uh, the element in phase cohomology group of absolute Gala group with FP coefficients. That is a usual Kumai map. Most of the people are familiar, but let me just call quickly that if you consider the, these elements, um, there is a isomorphism of um, uh, F star divided F star P to H1 GFP. And uh, concretely, this isomorphism was that uh, if, if, um, if you consider AI, this is actually home because the action on FP is trivial. So this is actually homomorphism of uh, absolute Galois group to GFP. And this homomorphism is specifically defined by the equation down that if sigma acts on P0 of uh, AI, anyone, it doesn't matter, then uh, the power of zeta P uh, is a certain AI to sigma. And this AI to sigma is this given homomorphism. So, so this is actually exponent which zeta P appears. So it is, a, it is a well known. Yeah. So, so, so now, now the point is that the exciting thing is that the massive product originally they came from topology, and, and then uh, there is a lot of motivation, of course, to which I will not go to it. But, but uh, uh, there is very direct and wonderful link with this Gala theory, and, and I want to go as quickly as possible to just do this link. So, 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 so we, so we shall connect the condition with the massive product. Uh, this is a product of L element, we call it like that, is defined. And when it vanishes, this, and this, uh, uh, this is a beautiful embedding problem, which I, which I love. And so, so let's say call just about upper diagonal matrices. So, so this will be, I will use um, for N elements, I will use N, uh, plus one time n plus one matrices. So, so when it, it is upper diagonal is very clear. So it is uh, everything below diagonal is here on the diagonal is one and, and on the over the diagonal can be anything in FP. And these are a PC, uh, this is a PC low subgroup of GL and plus one FP. I will make some comments about this related to Galois in a, a very, very soon. So, so yeah, so, so the center is uh, of, uh, of these, of these matrices is easy to identify. So, 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 so that is, they are just uh, the upper corner matrices uh, with FP where there's this little star there, which is, uh, it can be anything in FP, everything is zero, otherwise except diagonal is uh, one. And I, I, I was delighted that I realized that Eva is color was uh, was the person who already already observed this uh, so there's no exercise for students but but the already observed is that the order of GL and FP is precisely what we want so this P to n minus one P to n minus P etc up to P my P to n minus P n minus one and he was he observed it when he was studying already Gala global general equation of degree P to n so I feel I am very happy about this because I feel directly connected as I said with uh, with uh, Galois. and so 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 that does indeed uh, we see that the highest power of uh, P to n uh, uh, P to n time n minus one over two is the you know, highest power which divides the order of GL and FP. And of course, this tells you that this UNFP is PC low subgroup of GL and FP. So, so now, 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 finally, we are coming to this to this critical embedding problem. So, 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 we, so, we, so, actually, the massive product uh, at the be beginning they look kind of funny because because it, they, they are not just usual product they are not they are multi-valued functions so 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 this is actually subset of H two in general and uh, but we shall not be interested in the sub uh, uh, it is interesting subset very interesting but we shall not uh, be at this right now um, considering the whole subset but we are interested only in one thing when zero belongs to to the set and so. And so when it is when it is actually defined, uh, there is certain condition for this, and when zero is uh, inside of the set, and this is all related to this very simple diagram, where um, UNFP um, uh, subject uh, on um, uh, what we call UN plus FP. 
uh, one FP bar. So this is a quotient of U and FP by center. So this FP on the left corner is supposed to be center because it's isomorphic to center. And so and, and now the embedding problem would come that you take absolute Gallagher GF. And at first you have to behave that there exists gamma, this one condition. And then for given gamma, if we ask that there exists omega, such that uh, the diagram is commutative and then with the solution of a bending problem with given gamma, gamma. Yeah. Uh, please also, uh, if anything is unclear, do ask. Even that we don't have that much, that much time. <laughs> so, 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 so here is the 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 so the so the product is defined is if there exists a continuous homomorphism with gamma like that, such that for there is some extra condition such that for each sigma from G. Uh, if you go to the near diagonal, so near diagonal will be the element a i i i i plus one, where i go from one up to a, a, up to n, and so and and now uh, on the uh, near diagonal, it has to satisfy these conditions that if you project um, uh, this uh, image of uh, gamma, then you get actually this homomorphism on the near diagonal a i sigma, which make good sense. And so, and now um, this is condition for definition. It is defined even on if this, the, such gamma exists. If uh, this product is defined, then one can associate certain elements in H2 as one ion, uh, so different suitable gamma. And this I am not going to details of this, and this is how the whole set would be filled, but I will again concentrate on the condition when zero is inside. So Professor Mina, can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you say that. So here we have many different choice for gamma. Is there a good choice for gamma in general? Yeah, this is there's also awesome question. Yeah, that, that, that it is indeed that the the choice we really would like to have is a, such a gamma when when they exist this omega which uh, uh, solve this embedding problem. So not every gamma will work. Okay, so so many gamma will might not work, but uh, but one gamma uh, if it works, it might not work. None of this gamma that would be a bad thing. But if one gamma work, then then we say that uh, the, the vanishing actually happened. And perhaps you can go to the next slide. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is already there. Sorry. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, go, 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 go back, please. So, sorry. Yeah. So, 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 sorry. I didn't know that. So, so for us, the only important fact is to know when, when this um, uh, contains zero, when this uh, product contains zero, and uh, and this and this happen. Uh, if this happened, then we say that this n massive product vanishes. So, so, so we, if zero is inside of the set, we say that this product vanishes. And this happened even only if, so the, this is what I already did tell it, but let me tell it again. So, so this happened even only if, if uh, there exists this given gamma, which is this good gamma, which Tung asked about. And for, su for, su for such good gamma, there exists this omega, such that GF, um, uh, uh, for this uh, the diagram commutes. Thank you. And, and now, now um, uh, so 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 we uh, we in in the journal of uh, in James in 2017 uh, we uh, and also in journal of London Mass Society we we stand with uh, uh, we, we propose the following conjecture. So for every field F prime P and cohomology class uh, classes A1 up to AN from H1 GFFP with N larger or equal to E, if the N massive product is defined, then it contains zero. Oh, that's a very interesting conjectures. Could you maybe you know kind of give a big picture about how this conjecture is developed? And what do we know about the status of these conjectures? Yeah, I, I, I would love to make big picture, but, I, but, the, but the, the talk is short, so, so I will take on, on, a, on a glimpse of this big picture. So, 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 so let, let me tell just a few of these glimpses. So, so some highlights of this, of this history and development and results related to this conjecture, I contained already in 1975 paper of Bill Dwyer in a Journal of Pure and Applied Mathematics. And in fact, this allows us um, uh, to formulate um, these things the way how I did formulate this. 
this uh, this conjecture because I formulated using the using uh, Galois presentation, and this come back to Dwyer. If one carefully look at the Dwyer paper, one sees that this is a, a lot of things I already did there. Then then uh, uh, Hopkins and Vickel gain. They published in 2015 um, in Journal of Pure and Applied Mass, um, a wonderful paper, but, uh, but they, of course, these results were known sooner. And in fact, in 2013, she lectured. This was incredible happiness because, because I didn't know somebody else invited her. I didn't know who invited her. And, and she, so she, she, suddenly she appeared in, uh, in our department and she lectured on wonderful subject of triple massive product. And, and we stand, we were, we were sitting there and we were telling, whoa, that's great. And so, so, and they proved um, the result of a algebraic number field, so the triple massive product actually in other language, which we introduce later on, that it, that it, that it vanishes. And, and they use local global principle in, uh, in connection with algebraic number theory, and they prove it actually for all global fields. And so, and now we, we stand, uh, we were discussing it and I realized, you know, Dan, I had some paper with David Lieb and Tyra Smith, which we, 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 we probably something, something similar. And, and so, so we look at this, we, we work on this and so on. And, and then we realize, okay, God, we can do it for every field. So, 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 so we generalize it for, for every field, exactly there is that. So, so, so for P equal two, N equal three, we prove actually what we now call the uh, call the conjecture, and then then we we we, we prove also some other results for, for local fields and some other things and so on. So and we were telling it, it does look there is all indication that there was also some very strong feelings that it, it should hold for for every field in general for every n, and that is why we formulated this conjecture, uh, and and there, there was a number of other results. So, so, so here there is a few results which I want to mention. So, so when n equal three later on, f is um, any field and p is arbitrarily. So, 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 th so this is this is now known, and this is due to work of Matsai, Eli Matsai, Ido Efrat, and and Eli Matsai and and Minaj and Tan. So, 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 Mat uh, so we were all working kind of independently on on this thing. We were kind of we were also connected, and I was terribly happy that Eli was working with Ido and so on. And Ido informed Eli about this uh, this conjecture. It was wonderful, and in Matsai la, love Bahava group, and so it is, it is so good. And so so and and then then so so Eli, Eli was the first uh, who posted in um, on the archive. We, we shortly afterwards uh, also also posted, and then then uh, then uh, uh, with uh, with um, uh, uh, Ido and Matsai uh, has has some some paper, and 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 me and in Tan we we posted some solution and. One thing which I like very much, I, I like all of these papers, of course, they're, they're wonderful and the great inspiration. And so, but 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 um, there is there is one thing when I'm particularly attached is that in, in advances in 2017, which was however done much sooner, is that we we stand we provided a constructive uh, uh, Galois theoretic solution of the corresponding Galois embedding problem, and I'm still very attached to this. I think that uh, there is a lot of potential still developing this further idea, and we are actually working on this. So, so then when F is local field and N is larger or equal to E, then for all primes it is true. That is, this result is not difficult to prove, but it's important result. And so, so it is it just connected with state duality, uh, well-known result for, for local fields and, and once you use it, actually now you use indeterminacy so for a good reason it helps you to vanish. And so and now, now when, uh, later on, I was very lucky to work with Pierre Guillaume and, uh, and Adam Topaz and uh, Oliver Wittenberg. And so, so we were working for, for quite a bit, actually. And, and um, uh, we, we proved some, some things that it looked like a very innocent, this very special case that is N equal four, but it was the first time when we, I was speaking with some other people who work with massive product with topology and so and they told me if you prove something about n equal four, do let us know. And so 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 I I I we 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 finally succeeded with n equal four. And 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 so, so it was kind of new from this point of view. And and we again use local global principle and uh, we uh, I formulated this problem on, on, on these things. And then Oliver helped us a lot with uh, local global principle and he uh, he put it on the on the appendix, uh, his uh, wonderful expertise in this. And in fact, um, uh, in um, uh, very, uh, 
uh, well, it is not yet published, but it, it is on the on the archive and it is uh, already on the home pages of of uh, High Pass and Wittenberg. They put wonderful results. I'm incredibly excited about this. So, 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 so they prove it that for uh, the spectacular in a way that that for any algebraic number field and n larger of uh, equal k and uh, arbitrary prime p. So 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 there is a is that they use the other work uh, which which they publish in American Journal uh, Journal of American Mathematical Society in Annals of Mass and so on. So 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 they they there there's some wonderful development and it it, it it has a lot of lot of connection with Brocato and many things. I am so excited about this and I cannot wait to develop, develop as much as soon as possible as soon as more. more. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, for Mina, for giving like. A very thorough overview of the subject. And so I think this is the first part of our talk. And I think if people have any questions, please feel free to ask. We're happy to answer. Yeah, I am. Uh, you, you know, Tung, I am extremely interested in your thesis, of course, and 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 and, and also uh, naturally because you have different way of looking at massy product, and I am very much wondering where your massy product, which you want to use, where they come from, how they uh, influence your result, and so on. And perhaps you can give me also a little bit of your motivation for the result in your thesis. Yeah. So, thank you for asking. So. In my thesis, I also study graph group, maybe, but uh, from a slightly uh, different point of view. So I study Gauss segmentations, uh, but mostly Gau motivic Gauss segmentation. That means Gauss segmentation coming from the motive. But I want to start uh, with a very simple story. And I think it's a motivating story. Um, so long time ago, people studied, the, you know, according to Professor Cardo, at the beginning, there is one zeta function, and then there are the zeta function who born. So the, uh, the Riemann data function is defined as the infinite sum of the one of n to the power s. And we know that this infinite series is conversion when the real part of s is bigger than one. And um, so in 1734, Euler found the following remarkable formula, which is if you take zeta two, which is a reciprocal sum of all the square, what do you get in pi square over six? So I first learned about this formula in high school and I will mesmerize by the formula. It's so, so beautiful. And that is one of the reasons I really want to, to do number theory. Um, and then in fact, by the same methods, Euler you know, tried to generalize this and he computed theta 2K for all positive integer K. And if you look into the formula, then there are two important parts. The first part is there's some power of pi, so pi to power 2K. And the second part is some rational numbers. And here, this Russian number is essentially the is called the Bernoulli numbers, and it defined by the infinite series by the Taylor series of z over e to the power z minus one over b to the power n over n factorial. Um, so, so this formula turns out to be very, very powerful and very in, influential in mathematics. And ever since Euler made this discovery, people would try to generalize this to you know other kind of data functions. And maybe to understand the two reasons behind these connections. Um, and I think in the 60s or 70s, Bert and Sweden and Tendaya, they made some, you know, they did some numerical calculation and they came up with a spectacular conjecture known as the Bert and Sweden and Dyer conjecture for elliptic curve. Uh, but then, so in some sense, now looking back, it's just, a, you know, a special instance of what we call the class number formula. And the, the two mathematicians, Berlinson and Delin, they made a breakthrough to the, you know, the study of the class number formula that I just mentioned by putting this study in the framework of mixed motive and motivic homologies. Uh, but unfortunately, the work of Berlinson and Delin can only predict the, the transcendental part, the pi to power something part of the formula. So what is missing is the rational part. Um, and then Block and Cato came to the pictures and they formulated a very precise conjectures and they used tools, very new tool at that time, this tool from Pierre Hoss theory by Fontaine and other mathematicians. And then I want to mention that the, uh, the work of Prof. Cato here is were used in the proof of Fermat last theorem. So, but, Something very so, important. So, so I would like to make, mention some some wonderful thing when I see the block in Kato day. So 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 there was actually Tunk uh, in October invited me to his defense, 
and on his defense, the examiner was ex exactly blocking Cato. And, and I was thinking that this is like if somebody would make a, examine calculus and Newton and Leibniz would be <laughs> would be examiner. I mean, it was, it was, this was fantastic. And, and so, so in, in, in fact, we were discussing uh, perhaps uh, Tung, you can, you can tell because you ask about also, also Spencer Bloch about uh, how we should study with this um, uh, co connecting with massive product and so on. And he made some wonderful suggestion related to your thesis of papers. You can, you can explain indeed about how this periodic Hodge theory is used and the, the heights and your result and how it is um, related to this massive. Yeah. Yeah, so let me talk very briefly about the result of my thesis, very briefly, because we don't have enough time and then we have, have other main results that we want to talk about. So I will go a little bit quick here. Um, so, so basically what I study in my thesis will study the connection with the block cattle conjectures, uh, maybe a, a different perspective on the block cattle conjectures. So I would fix M to be a motive. And you know, for people study Gawa theory, you can think about them as a compatible system of Gawa supplementations. And a folklore definition is a motive is just a simple general like homology theory. And it had different, different avatars or different realizations. So for example, you can take the drum cohomologies, the Bethy cohomologies, a tau cohomology, or when you go to the local field, you can have prism cohomologies. So those cohomology theory are connected by what people call the comparison isomorphism. And the block cattle conjecture studies the zeta function of motive. And instead of following, that is a time hour number of M is given by very simple formulas. You have the S0, which is to compute, and the mysterious factor called they define, they call sha. So here the time hour number is essentially the zeta function, the value of zeta function at zero, maybe you know, after changing some bad reduction from with bad reductions. And sharp M is a mysterious one, which is called the test suffering group associated with M. So the sharp here we define the case of elliptic curve by Bert and Swin and Dyer, maybe even before that. But Block and Cato were able to define, I, I want people, I think, with the right definition of a Selma group, and therefore we were able to define sharp. So this sharp is very mysterious. It's conjectured to be a finite group. We know in some instance that it's finite, but in general, even for elliptic curve, it's still, still conjectured. Um, uh, so in my thesis, I study the relation between high of a motif and data values uh, more precisely. So I will not go into detail here. So basically, the, the uh, one sentence summary of this result is that you can look at the block out of conjectures and the problem of counting motif of, of, of about it height. And then basically what we do here, we see how the set of global points is distributed among the atelic space. And so when we take the limit, the way, what we should get is exactly the time of numbers. Um, this is a fantastically interesting result. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, very inspirational. But by the way, I should, I should make also also comment which everybody here observes that that Bloch uh, there are at least two conjectures. So 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 they they are very famous conjectures. So, so this is the second famous conjecture which uh, uh, Tung is speaking. So so not about Galois cohomology, but about this special value which is extremely interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so perhaps uh, can, can you tell a little bit about what what come to your uh, to your proof or consideration or, or, of of your theorem? Yeah. So basically, the ideas were to study. Um, so in in the paper block cattle, they have to set AQP with compact. Um, but here, if you you know, sometimes you want to have a, a true analogy between real place and and periodic place. So the generalization here is a space PQP here, which is essentially a compact space plus some monodromy. And the monodromy contribute to the height. So essentially this here asks what is the difference between PQP and AQP? And it reflects in the high function defined by Cato here. But one thing that I want to say here is that, so here I can say pure motive. And so the question we can you know, try to see like what happened if we have mixed motives, that means we allow the filtration of the motive. So that is the next topic that I want to talk about that is directly related to massy product, which is suppose that I fix a, a sequence of motive, let's say M0 up to Mn, and I consider the set of all mixed motive with uh, decreasing filtrations. 
and such that the graded quotient is exactly the graded piece at i is exactly mi. So when we study this kind of problem, then cup product and mass C product will be a very naturally. Right? So suppose we have three extensions, we want to connect them, then the cup product uh, will play an important role. But we have more filtration, let's say you have four filtrations, then the mass C product will come into the pictures. Uh, so that is why we expect that mass C product is directly related to the uh, special values. And I mean, first of all, it affects the obstruction for at M, and consequently, it should. Uh, have contribution for zeta values. So in my thesis, I didn't write here, but in my thesis, I study the three filtration where you have the Z, the motif Z, Z twist by three and Z twist by 12. So in this case, only couple that happened, but I expect that when you consider a longer sequence of this, this motif, then the, the massive product will appear nat very, very naturally. Uh, so that is why I think that, you know, why my thesis is kind of related to what Jan did and so that is why I contacted him to, you know, learn more about massive product. This is really fascinating. So, so your massive product is actually coming from extension of motives, right? So, so, so that exactly. okay, okay. They, they, that's very exciting. Yeah, let, 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 let's just work on this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is the second part of the talk. Yeah, maybe I want to pause a moment if people have any question about about it, and then. Yeah, okay, so no question. So let, let me be, uh, continue out the story. So I think Jan, uh, Professor Mina was very kind that after a few emails, he allowed me to call him by his first name. So from now on, I will call him by his first name because I just get used to it. Um, so we want to talk about some of the results that we got together after these discussions. And it was kind of interesting because uh, I come from the background where I study special values and Jan come from background where he, you know, most, study uh, Dawa theory. So we might try to see the connection between these two. And we were very lucky, we, done, we were very lucky to find some results and we want to present it now. So maybe John, so, so I went to John's website and I found a very old paper, I think in 1994 and the result was kind of very, very interesting. So John didn't call it a theorem, he called it a, a fact. And so maybe John can say a bit, say a little bit about it now. Yeah, the, the, this was originally a fun fact. Yes, yeah, so 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 it was, you know, like as um, as uh, as Tung is telling you, a long time ago, I, I was I was te teaching something and and I want to explain uh, the values of zeta and negative thing and all of these wonderful formulas, right? So 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 here it's at one plus one and so so with the, you ask which every child can ask the question. How many natural numbers there are? And there is one answer which is not very useful, infinitely many. And or, or, or what is the sum of all integers? And there's also one answer which is not very useful, there's also infinite. But there are much more useful answers which already did there. Right? And, and, and namely, that, that the sum of all numbers, one plus one plus one, one, one and so that the infinity is min minus one half. And, and sum of all integer natural number is minus one twelfth. This is a very famous formula nowadays. And nowadays we recognize it that this is the values of zeta at zero and zeta at minus one. And so and, um, I realized something very interesting <laughs> is that, that uh, if, if you take integral from zero to one of x minus one, so, so this is actually, when you think about this, this is minus sine area of the beautiful triangle which you, which you learn in the grammar school. So this is uh, with a uh, side one, one, and uh, on the hypotenuse, you have square root of two. So everybody loves it, it's Pythagoras and so on. And, and, you, and, you, get, and you get one half. And, and so, so minus one, I mean, so zeta zero for us from now on is my is sine area of, uh, of this triangle. And yeah, and, and similarly, I realize that if you actually take um, uh, uh, the first uh, sum of the number uh, one up to x minus one, then uh, or, or again, you learn in um, perhaps in grammar school or in high school or whatever, you learn that, that the sum is x times x minus one over two. It, it, this was actually six zeros. Gauss uh, did it be first, uh, and so so so. Uh, and 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 then if I take again integral, I get exactly minus one one over twelve. And then I realize 
Well, it works all the time. Um, and I was thinking this must be very well known and uh, nevertheless, I could not find it. So I uh, submitted to Exposiciones and uh, they uh, also could not find anything. So, so they published it. So so, so it is, uh, uh, and, and uh, then a number of other mathematicians look at this and it's very curious and interesting result. Um, so Jan, is this possible to maybe to have a generalization of this one for maybe other class of data functions? This is a wonderful question. Actually, like there are some number of mathematicians ask me, even like Edward Frankel, look at my homepage and so on, and he asks and so on. And, and, and I've always wanted to do it, I never find the time. <laughs> and so, 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 so it is now, now it is perhaps time. So, so, uh, so in fact, we were, we were now con uh, uh, connected with uh, Tan, who also loved this kind of thing. And so in his, my uh, previous postdoc and now a new postdoc is Tung. So this is perfect, right? So, 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 so we were, we were considering the, uh, you know, Horvitz, um, uh, he, he, he defined this famous, which I now called Hoyvitz zeta function. So this was long, long time ago. And he has very good motivation because um, uh, L function can be expressed using this Hoyvitz zeta function. And Hoyvitz zeta function on the other hand, they're kind of preliminary step from zeta function because, because they're kind of, when you think about this definition for convergence here, yes, this is just, you take a real number between zero and one, and you shift the summation from usual Riemann zeta function by A, right? For all of the summons. So, so, so it is very natural thing, and, uh, and we always search for something which is easy to generalize, right? And, and so, so, he, so he, he did it, he did a wonderful thing. And, and so, 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 and, um, so, so he, he found this way with zeta function, and, and now the question is, and, even, and he found this relation, of course, with the Dirichlet L function. So, so, so now, now the question is, can we do it also for Hood zeta function and then consequently for L functions? Yeah, so it turns out, so we work on this problem and we actually found quite natural generalization that I, now I want to talk about. So I, we studied the kind of direct generalization of the power sum when a equal to one is corresponding to the classical Riemann data functions. So this generalized power sum we define for every integer m and the sum from a to the power n plus one plus a to the power n up to m plus a minus two to the power n. And it's known that this is a polynomial of degree n plus one. So a direct generalization of um, John observation is that the zeta value of the Hurwitz zeta function at the negative integer negative integer n equal to the integral from one minus a to two minus a of this power sum. So when a equal to one, you have an integral from zero to one. So exactly the formula that John observed. Then the nice thing about the proof is that we have three different proof for this one. We get kind of interesting on this all. For the first proof, we kind of tautological. We use just direct relation between this power sum and Bernoulli uh, numbers. And, you know, a long time ago, people have the formula for zeta values using Bernoulli numbers. But the second proof is kind of different. It used a very elementary proof and it used a relation between Hertwig zeta values and Riemann zeta values. So in other words, we can express Hertwig zeta value in terms of, zeta, of uh, Riemann zeta values. And in the last proof, we use a direct relation between Hurwitz zeta values of different end. Right, so that is the three proofs that we have. So, 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 so the reason why we are searching for different proofs is that this is a very curious fact. And, and it, is, uh, it is kind of, in a, when, when one look very carefully for these uh, polynomials, and so one find, find wonderful combinatorial properties and also realize that they actually, really, you can do physical meaning of value of zeta function because, because they are from, the point, from this point of view as the areas or sine areas and things like that. And, and, and the, the, so, so, so this is extremely interesting and we want to find the conceptual meaning of this and this why we are searching a, a more for more and more proof of, of these things so that we can get better and better understanding it. We are getting somewhere, it is, we are not yet completed and with, uh, is still many mistakes you're thinking. And, um, uh, in, in, in um, our final thing, of course, is to, comp uh, to compare this to this most sophisticated thing with uh, what the, the Tung mentioned in his thesis and uh, with Blochato um, uh, conjecture about special values and so on. And in, it, it looks that there will be some such connections and, and we are searching for this and uh, we are going, currently uh, uh, working on this. Yeah. yeah. So one question that I want to kind of put here, I think, um, you know, if people know the answer, I'm very happy to learn. So we have the notion of, uh, uh, our function for a motive, and I wonder what is the 
direct generalization of her with the function for motive for how you um, you know you shift the, the coefficient of the l function to you know to have what we call i would call hurt with l functions for general motive uh, yeah yeah this 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 is very good I, I i'm quite optimistic that this this can be defined there i now defined zeta function of in a very uh, more, much more abstract setting and using motives so 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 i i, I think this will be possible as, uh, and um, and i and i'm very hopeful in this direction yeah so so i always said with jan that um we want to keep momentum. So after doing this work, we try to find kind of how we apply this formula to maybe other, you know, how to apply this formula and maybe find some simpler uh, representation of data value using integrals. And we come across a very nice paper of Elsky where he gives some different meanings for the some certain data values. Um, so we try to imitate his methods and we found the next topic of study week quite a surprising. So that is what I want to talk about next. Um, so I want to start with something simple. So we study her with a function, and I mentioned that we want also want to study motivic L functions. And the easiest kind of L function we can study is just one dimensional L function, right? So L function associated with a Dickley characters. So let me start with. Um, a prime number p, and for simplicity, I assume that it comes to three mod four. So in our work, I did we did for all p, but for simplicity, we assume that p comes to three mod four, and I let chi p is a quadratic character associated with p, so that is the value of a given by the Lojong simple a over p, and so associated with these characters, we have the L functions given given by this infinite series. And so by some simple algebra, we can see that the special value at s equal to one has a very nice formula. So it is an integral from zero to one of a polynomial fpx uh, over x times one minus x to power p, where fpx is a polynomial d even by this formula over here. A, so the Lejong simple a over b times x to power a. So, so to, to derive this formula is quite easy. So at first I was very happy because I found I found this polynomial, but then at some a beautiful day, then told me that then told me and Jan that this polynomial is actually a classical object, and it have a name. It's called the Fokit polynomial associated with the prime p. So 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 let me make some historical comment. It is extremely interesting about this Fokit polynomial. They they were found really really very they are very natural when you think about the definition of these polynomials. It's very natural. They are. Coefficients are just Legendre symbols, x to a. So, so it is. It is kind of natural to define it. And um, so, 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 so Michael Fickett, he was from Hungary. He was, he was colleague of uh, George Polia and uh, John von Neumann and so on. And, and so, so, and, um, and so, so, and so, so, this Fickett polynomial actually become very interesting subject. And, and and also recently, some other people, in the, including my mathematical brother in the Ukrainville and some other people, start study this. It is it is a it is a beautiful, very interesting polynomial. But we have a little bit different point of view, and it is really fascinating. Thing. Yeah, so that is right. So there are a lot of work done about the zero of this polynomial, which is spectacular. But it seems like the arithmetic of this one somehow were, we don't we couldn't find some reference for this, so we, we try to study it, and we found some kind of amazing formula that we want to talk about now. Um, so we know that the Fokit polynomial have zero, G is zero at zero and one, you know, and it's not very important. So let's factor that out. So let me small fp to be the polynomial obtained from capital fp by removing the factor x and one minus x. And you can easily show that fp is a reciprocal polynomial of degree p minus three. And remember, p also p minus three e even. So in other words, we can write small fp as a polynomial of x plus one of x. And so because essentially this gp contain all the information we know about fp, so we call it the reduce for kid polynomials. And it turns out from our, uh, so I did a lot of numerical calculation with, um, I wrote some Python code and we found some quite surprising result and we can have made some conjecture. Some turned out to be wrong, some turned out to be true, but it was a very, very fun project to do some experiment to see what happened um, with GP. And so it turns out that it has some remarkable properties 
and it contains a lot of arithmetic information that number theory loves. So the first result that we obtained is this one. Uh, so we calculated the special value of these polynomials at five digits, two, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and um, negative and two, so five values. And here's a surprising fact about this one is that it only contains the factor H negative P, which is a class group of the imaginary quadratic field Q adjoint root of negative P. So that is a class group that number theorists love. And so essentially, the, I, I will not, you know, have the formula cap long, but the long story short, if you know GP, you know the class group, which for me will kind of amazing. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 this, the, the, we are very excited about, about, about this connection. There are, there, are, there are a number of wonderful connections with, with classical number theory, with, with this kind of thing, and also possibly later on with motives and so so. So it is, it is, it is very, 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 very interesting. Yeah, and and it's kind of new, new point of view of this Fekete polynomial, and and also we hope to make further progress on Gala theory of Fekete polynomials, which. Uh, um, Tung will come soon. Yeah. yeah, so in fact, so if we use this theorem, they can, can say something about the splitting field of FP. And furthermore, quite, quite I think the most surprising fact about this project is the following, which is that, so I did some numerical calculations with this, um, with this for kid polynomial. And in all of my calculation, the Gauss group of GP is only maximal. That is, this is symmetric group of degree HP, where HP is exactly the degree of GP. And because of the reciprocal relation between F and G, so if you, you have a suggestion from the Gauss group of FP to the quotient Gauss group of GP, but it turns out that the kernel of that map is also maximal. And that is Z mod 2 to power HP. It cannot be, be bigger than this. This is the best one you can do because of the reciprocal relation between FP and GP. Um, so from the calculation, we conjecture that we have uh, this exact sequence. And furthermore, it is split exact sequence. And it's saying that the Gauss group of FP is a semi-direct product between Z mod 2 to the power HP and the symmetric group with HP element. Yeah, this is this is for us very fascinating conjecture. And uh, I, I was speaking recently with Andrew Granville, and the, he and his students are still working on fake the polynomial, uh, but different point of view. The, to finding zeros, complex zeros of Fekete is very interesting and it might be related. And, and so, so he was very surprised that, uh, that we are actually, he told, yeah, you are getting uh, Gala groups, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So we, we, we would like to prove of this conjecture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that all the mathematics results that we want to say, and Jan have some very exciting thing to say as well. So, so <laughs> let, let me call Leslie. Leslie, so, 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 you know, today is June 2nd, and it is the day when Evais Gala was buried in a common grave on one Pinassa Cemetery. Gala died on May 30th. Leslie, which is here, my wife, we laid uh, his last word to his younger brother, which I think it is a wonderful testament to um, Galois, and, uh, and we, we, we are so grateful to him. Yeah. Ne pleure pas, Alfred. J'ai besoin de tout mon courage pour mourir à 20 ans. Don't cry, Alfred. I need all my courage to die at 20. <laughs> Yes, 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 thank, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, so, 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 uh, so, yeah, yeah, sometimes when I was teaching classes, I was telling this phrase and they become kind myself and the students come, come to me and they were telling purpose, I do not care. <laughs> and they were, they were giving me handkerchief and whatever. So, so think I'm all, uh, nearly kind right now. <laughs> so, so thank you very much for all your attention. It is very, very nice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. For the attention. Thank you very much. Thank you for an amazing talk. So, are there any questions? Are there any questions? I have a question. Mm. Yep, yes, please. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, in, in the in the formulas uh, that uh, you uh, computed the special values of the GP function. Yeah, here exactly. 
uh, how the class group of imaginary quadratic fields appear? I is it related to the uh, class number formula that is uh, very simple for imaginary quadratics? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. So, for example, that's a very good question. Thank you for, for asking. So, you look into the relation between F and G, you see that in order to compute, let's say, GP2, for example, you need to evaluate F, F actually to one, right? And then, yeah. you know, FP1 equal to GP2. And you FP1 essentially FP derivative but one. So, and we take the derivative of FP, you get exactly the class number formula that, that you just mentioned. And if you want to compute other value, let's say zero, then you need to plug in actual to I here. And this one is actually related to a very, very, very beautiful calculation due to, to burn. He computed some special sum of quadrics of the Lejeune simple in some intervals, and we use his result in order to to obtain these formulas. Yes, yes. So, so, so comments for this is that it is indeed quite fascinating things. So there, there are a lot of things known about partial sum of Legendre symbols and distribution of um, uh, of quadratic residues, and so in 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 connection with class numbers. So, 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 so this is a beautiful mix and an extremely interesting mix. And, uh, and there is a, I sent a lot of guys in analytical number theory, in um, um, algebraic number theory. So all, 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 all of this is entering this, uh, this picture here. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. These, these are very question? nice. These are very nice identities. Yeah, thank you. Um, so one thing I want to say here, we, uh, this is my, probably my speculation and we have no evidence. So you see on the formula we have the factor H negative P here. And I wonder if it's actually true for any integer n or, or not true. So I was not able to confirm this because when p big, then the calculation turned out to be too expensive. So I put in the software program Perry, but it just ran too long. So I have to stop it. But maybe some you know, people have better computational power and can verify for bigger p, or maybe come up with a conceptual understanding of this for key polynomials. Yeah. yeah I also hopes that um, uh, yeah, our collaborator Lyle can help us a little bit because he has uh, approach to some uh, 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 really strong computer computing facilities and so on and so 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 with this yeah so 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 the, 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 this is really indeed fascinating fascinating things we are, we are, uh, we wonder what 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 is what is happening next we cannot wait <laughs> yeah. yeah and and the the uh, maybe the appearance of uh, uh, this uh, this type of imaginary quadratic field is that uh, exactly in these types uh, we have one prime of ramification, just one prime ramified. Maybe uh, this this related to that because the discriminant is a prime power. So maybe yeah. So yeah, I think I I, I think yeah. I think what you trying to say like so for example, if we instead of taking the character. Uh, conductor P, what happened if you consider a general conductor, right? Um, right, in, in my, in my, we didn't yeah. write down, and for some reason, Jack and Tan were not very interested in that, so we didn't, I didn't pursue it. Yeah, but I think if you essentially own the thing go through, and instead of having the class number of S negative P, you have the class number of imaginary quadratic field for any conductor D for this formula over here. Oh, very, very nice. Uh, yeah, the, 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 this would be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if we are interested here, yeah, we, 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 we could discuss this more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that is um, uh, indeed also the also the um, uh, connection with ramification is very interesting because we, on the other hand, we also studied the uh, Galois group of uh, say maximal p extension with uh, uh, aesthetic ramification, and, and so, so, so I think this is related. Yeah, uh, I, um, I I'm very in, uh, very interested in these things, uh, I'll, I'll may, especially the ramification, uh, because my, my thesis is about uh, a study of uh, a subgroup of class group of number fields called mm -hmm. Puglia group that is controlled by ramification <laughs> due to works of some uh, maybe like uh, Jean Luc Chabert and someone uh, you can find them and so the ramification. Uh, is uh, the, the controlling by ramification is a very interesting subject for me. 
Thank you very much. Perhaps, perhaps do, we encourage you to contact us, uh, please, uh, via email. That, that would be really wonderful. And, and let's discuss further. It is it sounds absolutely wonderful. Then, clearly, I was telling we, we might get too much over the time. I'm so sorry. Oh, this is why I'm taking uh, too much time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you for the interest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, it was really amazing talk. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh, yeah, so actually, uh, let, let me just remind you, everyone, that uh, we are not yet finished. So there will be a couple of more talks uh, after the lunch at 2 p.m. And the first talk will be more short talks. And the first short talk will be given by Alexander Duncan at 2 p.m. So I'll see some of you. We'll see That's some of Eastern you. Eastern time. Yes, so it's New York time, yeah, to be precise. So <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, I will see. Uh, we will see most of you probably at two p.m. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jan. Thank you. Oh, it is such a pleasure. I'm so happy to see you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am very really excited. Yes, thank you. And it was also a pleasure to introduce Tung to you. <laughs>